Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Today I'm very excited because we're going to be exploring some really amazing facts about a bird that I have a feeling a lot of us are already familiar with. Think a bird that's very tall, think a bird that's very pink, and think a bird that maybe likes to stand on one leg. If you're thinking of a flamingo, you're exactly right. Today we're going to be exploring some amazing facts about flamingos. Let's get into it. Flamingos are one of the most well-known birds in the world because, well, they're bright pink, they're very tall, they've got a long neck, and they feed with their head upside down. There's a lot of really weird things about flamingos, and we're going to get to all of that stuff in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and start with, where do flamingos live? There are actually six different species of flamingos that are typically found in or around shallow water ecosystems. Think wetlands. Think coastlines and lagoons. We find four of the species of flamingos in North America and South America, and we find two species of flamingos in Africa, Asia, and a small part of Europe. We're only going to be finding flamingos in tropical or temperate environments. We are not going to be finding them anywhere near the North Pole or the South Pole. As we've already said, flamingos of course have those beautiful bright pink feathers and their pink color is actually a result of their diet. Flamingos are typically eating things like blue-green algae, brine shrimp, aquatic insect, insect larvae and eggs, all sorts of other tiny organisms that are floating around in that shallow water where they live. Their food especially the blue-green algae, has a really high amount of something called carotenoids in it. Carotenoids are an orangish-red pigment, and as flamingos eat that orangish-red pigment, their bodies break it down and it eventually appears in their feathers as that kind of pink color. Flamingos are not born pink. They are born kind of a whitish gray color, and as they eat over the first couple years of their life, the pigment builds up and builds up and builds up in their feathers and slowly turns them pink. It can take actually about three years for them to get that full pink coloration. Different parts of the world have different food available for flamingos, and because of that, some flamingos have become pinker than other species. Flamingos that live in an area where there's a really high concentration of that blue-green algae, they're going to be really pink, like the Caribbean or American flamingo. But species that live in part of the world where maybe there's not so much blue-green algae, maybe they're eating mostly insect larvae, they're going to have a bit of a duller pink color. That would be something like the greater flamingo. Flamingos are filter feeders, which is how they're able to eat all of these tiny organisms that are floating around in the water. Their beaks are lined with these comb-like structures that we call lamellae, and as they take in a mouthful of water and food, the water escapes through the little openings in the lamellae, but the food gets trapped inside. As they chatter their bills open and close using their tongue to squish the water out, they're able to consume a lot of those tiny organisms all at once. Flamingos need a very long neck to be able to feed this way because their legs are so long. They have to be able to reach down to the ground almost to be able to reach all of their food and sometimes they can even stick their head several feet underneath the water while they're feeding. When they're not feeding, we often see flamingos resting on just one of those very long legs. Scientists aren't exactly sure why they do this, but we do have a couple hypotheses. I'm going to have you guys pause the video for just a second and take a moment. Make a hypothesis yourself. Why do you think that flamingos stand on one leg? Hmm. Well, I will say that flamingos are not the only bird that does this, and scientists kind of have two hypotheses. The first hypothesis is that it helps them save energy. They have a little mechanism that helps kind of lock that leg up in place underneath their body, which takes less energy than if they were standing on two legs. The second hypothesis is that it helps them stay warm. Flamingos don't have any feathers on their legs, of course, which means 
heat can escape from their legs and make them cold. By tucking one leg up underneath the feathers, it's gonna help trap heat and keep them warmer. Flamingos are gregarious, which means they live in these really large social groups where there's not really any flamingo who's in charge. They kind of just all coexist together. They gather in especially large groups during the breeding season for a couple different reasons, but especially because there's safety in numbers. As flamingos are working to attract a mate, they gather in these large groups and they all walk together. They raise their heads as high as they can. Both males and females participate. They raise their heads as high as they can. They walk together and they slowly turn their heads side to side. We call this behavior flagging because their heads kind of look like flags waving in the wind. And as they're flagging, females are looking for the tallest, the biggest, the strongest flamingo to be their mate. After the breeding season is kind of coming to an end and it comes time for them to make their nest so that they can lay an egg, flamingos make their nest along the edge of the shore of whatever wetland environment they're living by. They basically make their nest out of these piles of mud that have a little divot in the middle where females lay one single white egg. Flamingo pairs will typically stick together for the breeding season and they'll work together to incubate the egg to keep it warm and then they both care for the chick during the first couple weeks of its life. Unlike other birds who often go out and collect food and then bring it back to their chicks, flamingos produce something called crop milk which they use to feed their chick. Flamingos in their crop, which is a part of their throat, kind of where most other birds would store food to then give their chicks later, in that part of their throat, flamingos make this bright red, nutrient-rich, carotenoid-filled substance that then they feed to their chicks to give them nutrients and energy. Because it takes so much food and nutrients and energy from the parents, mom and dad flamingos will often lose some of their pinkness while they're feeding their chick. After several weeks of being cared for by their parents, chicks will start to gather in a big group together with other chicks. We call that group a crush. That word is kind of funny because in other languages, a crush is kind of like a daycare or the babysitter. So that's kind of what's happening with all these flamingo chicks. When they are in their crash, parents can kind of work together to care for the group as a whole, and it makes less work for each individual set of parents. After about four months, the chicks are completely independent of their parents and are ready to kind of go off on their own and start their own life. Fortunately, most flamingos are not threatened with extinction, but they are facing some threats in the wild, especially because flamingos need a stable, shallow water environment. One of the biggest threats that they're facing is the destruction of those environments. As humans build dams and channels off of waterways and we're changing the flow of water, a lot of the wetland ecosystems that flamingos depend on are not there anymore. They've been drained or that water has been moved somewhere else. Another issue that flamingos are facing is collection of their eggs for food and poisoning from chemicals and other harmful substances that are getting into the water where they feed. One very simple way that you can help protect flamingos, whether they live in your area or not, a great rule of thumb to live by is use the smallest amount of water as possible so that we're not draining these natural water environments that animals like flamingos depend on. All right, you guys, that is all the flamingo facts that I had for us today. I hope you enjoyed learning about those six different species of flamingos. If you'd like to learn even more, test your knowledge, do an activity, maybe do a project, be sure to click that link below to visit our website, and we cannot wait to see you guys at our next adventure. Thank you very much.